The next set of algorithms we're going to look at are the searching algorithms. Um, they kind of go hand in hand with the sorting. The sorting algorithms, of course, we put data in a certain order. The searching algorithms, we're actually looking for something. We're looking for an element inside the list. Now, usually when we're looking for an element inside the list, we have a pretty good idea of the value or the object we're looking for. Now, in computer science language, that value is called the key. So what we're trying to do is find the key inside our list. Now, when we do that, we usually have two possibilities. Sometimes we only want to know if the key is in the list. So here's an example of we have a list of students and I'm looking for a student named Nelly. I just want to know if Nelly's in the list. That's all I really care about. So presumably, um, in this case, we're probably returning a Boolean. True if Nelly's in the list, false if he isn't. The more tricky question is what if we're looking for the key in the list, but what we want to do is return a value associated with that key. So for example, let's pretend I have a list of students and their GPAs, and I'm looking up a GPA for a specific student. So I'm searching my list for McCall, but I don't want to know if he's in there or not. What I want to know is if he's in there, what's his GPA? Now here, we're not returning a Boolean. We're not returning true or false or yes or no. Here we're returning a GPA. Now that's easy. So we find McCall, we find the item in our list, and we know what to return. We're going to return the GPA. The tricky part is what do we return if we don't find the key? See, we're not returning true or false. We're returning a number. So what number do we return if McCall is not in the list? It's not often an easy um, answer. You can say, well, you return zero. But remember, zero is a legitimate, if very poor, GPA. So maybe we return a negative number. That's, that seems to make sense. But what if we're looking for something like temperature? where negative numbers make sense, then what do we return? So it's an interesting uh, question and not always easily answered. So here's an example of uh, some code. So I'm searching for this name and if I search it and if I refine it, it's a Boolean right here. So if I find it, I return true. If I don't find it, I return false. No problem, very easy to do. Now, here's the tricky part. Let's say I'm looking for a GPA, in which case I'm not returning true or false, I'm returning a double. Okay, so I search for the name and I find it. Okay, so I return the GPA. What if I don't find it? What do I return? Zero, negative number, a very big number. It's a question that the writer of uh, the code has to decide. Now, a lot of times the way around that issue is if I'm looking for an array or an array list, instead of returning a specific value, I simply return the index of the array where I find the key. And I'll let the caller of my method uh, worry about it for me. So here's an example of where I'm looking through a list of students. Um, I'm looking for this specific student with this name. So here's my for loop. I start at zero. I go through the entire list. I ask if the list equals the name that I've given it. If so, notice what I'm returning. I'm returning the array index. I'm returning this thing right here so that the code can figure out then what to do. Now, if I don't find it, that's easy. I return negative one. And that's simple because, of course, there is no such thing as an array list of negative one. So we're going to look at three algorithms, three sorting algor uh, searching algorithms. Um, the first one's called the sequential search. That's the easiest, and that's the one you've probably already done. Basically, we're going to start at the beginning of the list, go to the end of the list, and if we find what we're looking for, we stop. All right? So we walk through the list until you find it. 
binary search is based on this notion of getting warmer. And when I do an example of the binary search, you'll understand what we're talking about. Now, of course, to do a binary search, we need a sorted list. That's important, and you'll understand why. The last thing we're going to talk about, just briefly, because it's not on the AP exam, but it's actually a very useful uh, searching mechanism, is something called a hash. Now, the basis of a hash is we have a function that turns the key we're looking for into an array index, and we go right to that index and see if we find what we're looking for. So the sequential search, I'm not really going to uh, talk much about. You, know, you start at the beginning of array. As soon as you find what you're looking for, you quit uh, and you get out. We've kind of done that on our solar system labs where we are looking for the clicked planet. We basically loop through the array of planets until we find the one that's clicked. So we're going to concentrate a little bit on binary search. And the binary search works something like this. We basically remember we have a sorted list. And we look at the middle of the list. And what we ask ourselves is, is our key equal to what we find, less than what's in the middle, or greater than what we find? If it's equal, great, fine, we found our key. If it's less than, all right, okay, if our key is less than the middle value, we know that if our key is in there, it's in the first half of the list. So I'm going to go back and perform the same search again, only I'm going to do it in the first half of the list. If our key is greater than the middle value, then I'm going to repeat the search on the first half of the list. Now, as soon as I run out of list to search, I'm either going to find my key or I'm going to run out of list. When that happens, I'm done. I can say my key is not in there. Okay. Let's do an example. Let's walk through an example of a binary search. So here you'll see I've got a list of numbers. They're in order. That's important. We talked about that before. 1, 4, 8, 13, 27, 64, and 110. And I'm looking for 4. Now we know 4 is there. It's in the middle of, it's right here at this position. But, you know, once again, the computer doesn't know that. All right, so remember, the first thing we do is we look in the middle of the list. Now, the middle of the list is 13. So, I look at the middle of the list, and I check it with 4. Now, as it turns out, 4 is less than 13. Fair enough. So I'm going to repeat my search on the first half of the list. So anything below 13, I'm going to search in that part of the list. So what do I do? I look at the middle number. Sure enough, 4 is there. I've found my value. Now, let's repeat that again, only this time we're going to repeat it with a number that's not in the list. So here we have our sorted list. We're looking for 70 this time. And now, of course, we know that 70 is not there. So we compare 70 with 13. 70 is greater than 13. Fair enough. Let's repeat our search on the top of the list. So middle number is 70 uh, equal to 64. No, it's not. It's greater than 64. So let's repeat my search on the upper half of that list. Now here, you'll notice there's only one element left in my list. I compare 70, it's not the same, okay, it's not equal, but since there's no more list to search, I know that my list isn't in there.